Chinese drones, should we still buy them or is it just too risky? Well, stick around, I'll give you my opinion on the matter. For the last five years or so, there's been a lot of concern by the U.S. government over the possibility of Chinese drones stealing sensitive data. This all began back around 2016, when Beijing passed a cybersecurity law which required all companies to turn over data on demand. Well, that's a little scary if you think about it, because anything you take out there, whether it be data for your company, for the military, could be transferred back to DJI servers and consequently to Beijing itself. As a result, the U.S. Interior Department grounded the whole DJI fleet, citing concerns over data espionage. And in 2017, Homeland Security warned that DJI was selectively looking at government and private enterprises and stealing sensitive data. The Pentagon then assigned its Defense Automation Unit to look at a U.S. alternative to the Chinese drones. And in August of 2020, after 18 months of testing, they awarded five contracts to U.S. firms. Those firms were Skydio, Vantage Robotics, Altavian, Teal, and Parrot. Now, Parrot is a French company, but they committed to making a U.S. subsidiary to build their Parrot Anafi USA. Notice who was missing from that list, DJI. Well, in 2019, the budget request for small unmanned drones was $280 million. That's up from $89 million the previous year. Now, you don't think DJI was concerned about that? I bet they were. That brings us to today. And currently, the United States Commerce Department has blacklisted DJI along with other Chinese companies for several reasons, and not just for potential espionage, also for human rights violations. Now, Congress has deposed a National Defense Authorization Act, and the initial language in there said it banned all Chinese products, meaning no government entity could buy anything manufactured in China. But since then, that language has been taken out. Now, that is now in conflict with what the Interior Department did and the blacklist from the Commerce Department. So what's DJI's response to this? Well, they've always maintained the fact that they are separate from the Chinese government in Beijing and don't turn data over to them. But you still got to wonder about what the government could demand. So in response to that, several years ago, DJI developed their LDM program, Local Data Mode. Initially, this rolled out to government entities, which meant you could turn off all internet access to your drone. They've now just installed it in the DJI Go 4 app. It's supposed to cancel any internet activity between DJI or third-party servers and keep all your data local. So as you turn that switch on, that gives you local data mode. Now, what things do you lose when you do that? Well, you lose software and firmware updates, map updates, TFRs, geofencing, and other items. So is that a big deal or not? Mm, we'll have to think about that. DJI says they've had an independent third-party association test this software and make sure that it is secure. And this company has agreed that it is a secure system. Now, based on my rant last week, I'd like to know if that has any effect on geofencing, but I don't think it does. But stay tuned. In future episodes, I'll let you know that after I've tried it out. So can we buy or should we buy DJI? Well, currently, all DJI products are still available for sale. All the apps work. And there shouldn't be a problem operating your drone. But it does concern me, and I've been actively looking at U.S. alternatives to bring different drones into my program. Well, currently, I don't think Autel's ready for prime time. Skydio is a little different than what we need. The only one I've really found is Parrot. And even though it's a little quirky, their Anafi drone fits pretty well into the program. So let me know what your feelings are about these issues. I hope you're still enjoying these vlogs, and if you are, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And if you feel like it, pass it along to your friends. That would be greatly appreciated. That way, I can let you know about future videos. Even though I still plan to publish every Tuesday, I may do one or more in between times, too. Each week, I'm ending with a drone, photo, or video, and this week's a little different. 
A recent student, let me see one of his videos that he took in Sicily, a little town called Ortigia on the southeast corner of Sicily. And while I can't actually conclude it in my vlog here, I'm gonna give you a link to it down below. And it's really good, but what you have to remember is it was taken with a DJI Spark, and this was only his third flight. So you can cut him a little slack for any of the rapid movements or jerky movements you might see in there. I think he's got a real good future in filmmaking. So thank you, Carmelo. Appreciate the input here. And if you've got a video or a picture you'd like included in a future episode, just send it on to me, and I'll be happy to include it. And thank you for watching.